Good afternoon and welcome to State News File. I'm Nathaniel Maurice. Christian Odell will have sports coming with us in a moment, but before we do that, we're going to take you outside to where Danny Seymour is. Danny, you're looking good right now. You're looking fresh. Oh, Mo, you are too sweet, too kind, and I am, I'm definitely feeling fresh out here right now with this gorgeous weather that I'm standing in. The shot really just doesn't do it justice, but I wish you could see behind me not a single cloud in the sky, and it's been beautiful all day long. I've just been loving this weather, and we've definitely been treated to it in Calgary. Last year, about this time, it was four degrees, which is, again, not too, too bad. Uh, definitely doesn't beat our record, though, which came back in 1928. It was 20 degrees. 20 degrees, can you believe that? In March, that sounds crazy to me, but what's even crazier is the record low, minus 32. That's thankfully all the way back in the 1800s. Now, I really wish I could stay out here and just do the whole weather report, but unfortunately, I'm gonna be joining you guys back inside the studio soon. Mo? We wish we could be outside too. As the season is changing and it comes to an end, so does a Trojan season, right? Yeah, no, it is coming to an end, but we shouldn't be looking at that in a sad way. It was such a remarkable season for all Trojan teams, hockey, basketball, uh, volleyball, track, whatever you name it. They had a great season. I had the pleasure of going to a lot of games, doing some commentary, some other jobs, and even just going as a fan. It was a really, really great time, and I'll have more about, more about that later. Yes, we will have more about that, but first, let's get to the top of our stories. Election season in here is here, and it was a very busy day in Calgary, with almost every party leader making their way to the city to promote their campaign. Tanner Strauss joins us live from the newsroom. Tanner, what's the latest on the campaign? Well, Mo, there was many events being held throughout the city today. Uh, Jason Kenney was at Scotsman Hill this morning to promote his campaign. The city can be expecting a lot of other parties to give their two cents later on this evening. Today marks day three of the campaign trail for all possible premier candidates. Calgary seems to be the destination for all party leaders today, with every one of them making a stop in our city. Jason Kenney was the first to make a speech today at the top of Scotsman Hill, and Kenney believes that the emptiness of buildings in Calgary may be because of the NDP government. One third of the office towers behind me are empty. They used to be filled with Albertans working with good paying jobs, the headquarters of Canada's energy industry. But under the Trudeau-Notley alliance, this industry has been under siege for the past four years. And tens of thousands of these good paying jobs have been lost as a result. Campaign runs can get very heated and they can bring out the worst and best in people. The Liberal Party had a small rally with their leader David Kahn today and he believes that you should focus more on your campaign rather than bashing the competition. I think Mr. Kenny's focusing on the NDP because they're his favorite bet noir and he likes to just bash them. Uh, what we're doing as a party and what I'm doing as a leader is speaking about the solutions, the constructive solutions we have. David Kahn will be door knocking later tonight. We will be able to catch Premier Notley at about 6 p.m. at her Northeast campaign office. Jason Kenney will be having a rally at the Ramada downtown at about 6 p.m. And the Alberta party leader Stephen Mandel is also having a rally at the Bridgeland Plaza at 7 o'clock. Back to you, Mo. Tana Strauss reporting from the newsroom. The election day in Alberta is April 16th. The Calgary Flames are heading back to the playoffs for the second time in three years. That means a lot of Flames fans will be enjoying a unique game day experience. Jordan Bay reports on what the Flames fans can expect during the playoffs. It's going to be like a Friday night every time, every night. Yesterday was officially the first day of spring, which means two things for most Calgarians. Warm weather and playoff hockey. Many Calgarians take part in a tradition known as the Red Mile. It's a storm of Flames fans marching and cheering up and down 17th Avenue. The tradition started after the Calgary Flames magical run to the Stanley Cup Finals back in 2004 and has continued every year the Flames have been in the playoffs since then. It was busy and loud like I've never seen anything like it before for sure. Like literally trying to walk through the crowd took forever and I don't know how long it was but we would go back and forth just weaving the crowd. But the rowdy and often intoxicated congregate of Flames fans have caused problems in the past. Businesses all along 17th Avenue are wary of this but are still excited for the playoffs to start. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> it's probably going to bring uh, a lot of crazy drunk people but it'll be fun. Just keep it all safe and should be good. 
The Calgary Police have said with the playoffs back in Calgary, they're currently working on their Red Mile plan to ensure people can be safe while having fun. While today might just seem like another normal day on 17th Ave with the playoffs fast approaching, all this will soon be covered by fans in red jerseys screaming, Go Flames Go! For State News File, I'm Jordan Bay. The Chalk Wagon Race has been the heart of the Calgary Stampede for nearly 100 years. Drivers and sponsors are hoping for the best today in the 2019 Calgary Stampede Chalk Wagon Canvas Auction. E.T. Monroy joins us live from the Stampede Grounds. E.T., what can you tell us about what's going on over there? Hey Mo, so yeah, we're just, we're less than an hour away before the auction gets going. 36 drivers are waiting to see what company name will be on their tarp. Sponsors are hoping for top drivers and that will also give them the exclusive opportunity to host clients and special guests behind the scenes in the Chuck Wagon Barns. For drivers and sponsors, it's a real partnership. Jack McDonald, one of the Rangeland Derby announcers, has joined us. And Jack, this should be a fun night. It's always a fun night. And uh, interestingly, uh, from, from about the start, some people noticed that it was an indicator of where the economy might be going. And, and that's uh, one, one of the reasons that uh, I think uh, the event gets such good coverage and uh, so many uh, advertiser possibilities are, are here. Exactly. So what, how do you think it's going to turn out now after the act? off of the auction seeing as what happens here is an indicator of uh, how successful Calgary is that's what they say well uh, to me I, I don't really feel any indication it was interesting last year because uh, we, we ended up being a bit improved last year at uh, 3.2 million dollars total about ninety thousand dollar average per wagon which was uh, which was great for the 36 guys who will be here during stampede but uh, I I really don't have a feel and most of the people I've talked to don't have a feel. I, I think everybody wants to see some kind of an increase, and uh, and I think uh, I think the chuck wagon crowd and the stampede crowd are always pretty optimistic about things. So, thanks, Jack. Thank you. So, Mo, I guess we'll we'll just have to see when the auction ends how successful successful Calgary has been, guys. E.T. Monroe reporting from Stampede Park. In the last 30, in the last year's auction, the top 30 bid was $130,000 for Kurt Benz Miller's rig, who has won the Derby four out of the last five years again. That tarp auction gets underway in just under an hour. With resumes in hands, thousands of young people dressed to impress and made their way to the big four with hopes of finding employment. Calgary's employment rate is at near record level. Statistic Canada reported in February the unemployment rate was 7.3% for youth. That number has jumped to 11.2%. There were more youth in the fair this year, 5,700 youth attended, up from the 4,600 that attended just last year. We're encouraging all youth to come in and make a great first impression. If the conversation goes well, the employer may want to pull them into one of these areas to do a personal um, interview here and could offer them a, a job on the spot. The Youth Hiring Fair finished last night, but Youth Employment Center services and job opportunities are available year-round. The Adolescent Mental Health Unit at Fuller's Hospitals changed into a vibrant and colorful atmosphere to better serve its young patients. The idea to revamp the mental health unit surfaced when kids and families noticed how dull and colorless the room appeared. The Smile Zone Foundation board members were delighted to take on the opportunity and funded the project entirely. Corporate members of the KPMG, Scott Olson, remembers the joy he felt the day this opportunity was brought to his attention. And, and right away, it had not just my interest, but everybody's interest. Um, when you put kids and um, the benefits of just smiling together, uh, as well as, uh, you know, specifically here as it relates to the Foothills Medical Center, the uh, focus on mental health, uh, you know, we just couldn't, we couldn't get involved fast enough. Olson says after seeing how happy the kids reacted to the new upgrades, their energy uplifted the room and gave the already vibrant space an extra boost of joy. They say dogs are men's best friends, but Charlie is certainly a Calgary's woman's best pal. Charlie is helping Shannon Samuel with a, with a serious illness, and Shannon almost lost him last week. As Rare Lou reports, 
A Calgary Transit bus driver saved a dog from being hit by a car. I don't know what they guy. Oh, you were just the way you were before. Transit operator David Belander was driving his shuttle bus in Mackenzie Town when he noticed a dog running away from a woman in distress. Leslie Samuel was walking her daughter's dog, Charlie, on his lease when the dog slipped out and ran away from Samuel, almost getting struck by traffic. Bus driver David Belander saw the dog running and pulled his bus over. He hit the hazard lights and ran to capture the animal. Started running this way toward 52nd Street and he's fast. He got, oh, oh, this is not good. This, this is not going to end well. If he ever makes it to there, he's not going to make it any farther. Shannon Samuel was just glad to have her pup back in one piece. Charlie is just kind of there for me, you know, mentally and when I, when, you know, when you just don't feel good and you're feeling down on yourself and that kind of stuff, he's just, it's really nice to have him there just to support me however I need it. So, and to focus on him instead of always focusing on me and what's going on with my health, it's really helpful. Today's Shannon and her mother, Leslie, met Belander to thank him for his efforts. Went from sheer, sheer terror on her face to sheer ecstasy. It was just worth its, I get a little choked up, worth its weight in gold. Charlie is a rescue dog that helps his owner with her autoimmune disease that is progressively getting worse. They say Charlie has been great support in helping her get through her hard days. For State News File, I am Ray Lahu. Those are today's top story. Danny Simo will have your full forecast for you after the break. But first, he is taking you on a tour on what's going on around Calgary. These cowboys and cowgirls are brave people, and that's no bull. Check out the professional bull riders at Nutrien Western Events Centre all weekend. A brilliant cast of actors and actresses have come from away to bring you Come From Away live at Jubilee Auditorium. Check out this heartwarming story all weekend. With all the nice weather we've had recently, the local golfists are getting very excited. If you're one of those excited Lynx people, you won't want to miss this golf show. If you fancy a long walk without any frustration, check out the Outdoor Adventure and Travel Show. They have all the latest in gear for your summer adventures. Forget the paper and the scissors. This weekend is all about rock. Come join Tom Cochran and Red Rider, Loverboy and Chilliwack for an evening of loud music and awkward dancing at the Grey Eagle Casino. Food, a basic necessity for everyone, but not everyone can get it for themselves or can afford it for that matter. But this is where Meals on Wheels comes into help. Meals on Wheels is a non-for-profit in Cal. Their main objective is to promote health and independence in the community. Meals on Wheels does this by providing and delivering quality, nutritious, and affordable meals for everyone in our community. Meals on Wheels values their clients and understands their situation and needs. So short-term or long-term, Meals on Wheels is here to help. Welcome back to the show. Now, when we were on that break between me being outside and back in here, I promise I was fighting hard to get this weather segment outside, but unfortunately, you just saw the picture change there. We have a green scene and we're not Game of Thrones, apparently, so we can't have a green screen outside. Oh, well. Uh, taking a look at Western Canada right now, Vancouver has the highest temperature that we've seen across the country so far, 11 degrees, but they have that cloud cover. Now, the rest, of the, the rest of the prairies, we're kind of just at the tail end of a nice high pressure system, giving us a nice cozy hug that was moving from the northwest of Canada, and it's going to come down to the southeastern parts of Canada. And we're going to take a look at eastern Canada right now. Toronto sitting at 7 degrees with that cloud cover, but they're going to be heating up a little bit, and those clouds are going to get pushed away by that high pressure system which is coming for them. And the Maritimes are gonna catch a little bit of that as well, but perhaps not as much. The temperatures there are still gonna stay pretty mild and they're gonna get some sunshine, maybe just like our resorts. 
It's a little cloudy at most of the major resorts today. Given the rain in Vegas, I'd bet the casinos are going to see a little more traffic today too. If there's a place for me though, it's Cancun because ole ole, they have the hot, hot, hottest temperature and a little cloud cover to give my reflective skin a nice break. And just like I was saying outside today, it has been absolutely lovely. 10 degrees, sunny, and a nice gentle breeze just caressing its way across the city. Just a nice whisper of wind. And speaking of wind, we're going to get some winds of change coming up next. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But first, let's take a look at what's going on across the rest of the province. Up north, take a look at that. Fort McMurray, 9 degrees and a beautiful sunny day. And look at that. Same all across the province. That, again, is due to that high pressure system still just holding on, just holding on to us still giving us those warm temperatures, but we are going to lose that as there is a low pressure system right now developing in the Pacific Ocean. It's going to come down across Canada a little bit like that, and it will give us a little bit lower temperatures, which we're going to see in our five-day forecast. Let's take a look. So there we see those colder temperatures coming towards the end of the week through the weekend, but don't worry because we are going to see some warmer temperatures coming back for a quick little visit once again and if you fancy a little skiing and want to get out in those colder temperatures why not check out our ski resorts given how sunny and warm it is in calgary today if you want to ski cop you may want to wear shorts and a t-shirt because it is very sunny and warm watch out for bear spots out there as the snow is fading fast out in the mountains, the conditions are a bit of a mixed bag. Sunshine listed their conditions as spring, which could mean really heavy snow, but they still have lots of the white stuff and lots of sunshine. Lake Louise is the coolest of our ski resorts in terms of temperature, so you may find the best quality snow there. They may not have the most snow, but it's shaping up to be a great day out there. Out in K country, Nakiska is looking great. Like we said, there's plenty of sunshine, so it may be the best bet if you like their machine-groomed snow and incredible scenery. Finally, Norway has the least amount of snow of all our big hills, but it's still a beautiful day to go out and shred if you want to sweat it out on the slopes. Christian Odell, now listen, the Raptors almost blew it last night against the Thunder, but thankfully, they were able to come out with a W. Yeah, that's really been a motto of the season, really been able to fight their way through. They got incredible depth with Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet, and getting for Lynn Sanity at the deadline to compliment Kawhi Leonard and Kyle Lowry. It's just been a really dream season for them so far, what they've really wanted. And we'll take a look at that in a little bit. The seasons for the Sage Trojans may be over, but that doesn't mean we can't look back at what they accomplished in the 2018-19 season. It was a treat of a year for St. Trojans fans and student-athletes alike. Vanessa Arate joins us live from the newsroom. Vanessa, the Trojans hockey team had some pretty exciting games, huh? Well, the Trojans team, men's hockey team didn't finish the season the way they wanted to, losing three of their four final matchups, but it doesn't matter because they had a great first round. Scoring leader, a Sate savior, Eric Cranky, scored back-to-back -back overtime winnings to send Sate to the second round of ACAC playoffs. Sate dropped game one to their northern rival, Nate, but won the second game back at home. Unfortunately, though, that was all they could muster as Sate fell 6-2 to the Ooks in game three of their series. Still, still an impressive run considering all the close calls they had in round one. And the hockey team was great, but the men's basketball team was the only Trojans team to make it to nationals. How was their season, Vanessa? Well, just like the hockey team, the Sage Trojans basketball team didn't make it to nationals. The men's team lost once all year, only once. The record was 20 to 1, which is quite a last minute heartbreak to, to swallow, much like the Raptors had to do last season. Unfortunately, the end result was the same. The men's squad couldn't keep it together at the national championships, dropping their first two games, which sent them home empty handed. Still, though, the ACAC championship three pet was incredible. All the state Trojans this season gave it their all and regardless now they can look back at all the achievements they've made this season back to you chris vanessa arate reporting from the newsroom all state trojans teams will celebrate their successful seasons at the annual awards gala on april 5th 
The Calgary Hitmen have returned to the playoffs this year after missing last year and starting ice cold this season. The Hitmen have stormed back and now have a date with the Lethbridge Hurricanes in the first round. Ryan O'Donnell reports on what the playoffs have in store for the team. The Calgary Hitmen have gone from zero to hero this year, rebounding from a terrible start to their season with loss after loss to making a miracle run to secure the last spot in the Western Conference playoffs. And that's helped boost the team's confidence. It's definitely huge just knowing how much uh, work we put in and just it shows uh, just clinching that spot with quite a few games left in the season. Definitely is huge and it was definitely a morale boost for us. But now it's crunch time and the Hitmen are ready for the challenge. The road won't be easy for them as they have a vigorous practice schedule and a first round matchup against their division rivals, the Lethbridge Hurricanes. Just knowing how hard it's going to be to move on and play in the later rounds, especially just playing against a tough team like Lethbridge and how physical they are. It's definitely uh, helpful to have that in the first round. The Hurricanes beat the Hitmen in five out of seven contests this season, but Calgary players are still confident in their chances as the playoffs are a different ball game from the regular season. I think they, you, you know what you're going to get with them there. You know they're a hardworking team and and I think I don't think it's going to change much, but you know it's just it's just whatever happens in, in playoffs happens, right? And you know you have to be able to adapt either way and you know, even in a game, single game, so many different things happen. So, yeah, I mean, being an adaptive player is very important, and especially in playoffs. For State News File, I'm Ryan O'Donnell. Last night in the NHL, the Vancouver Canucks took down the lowly Ottawa Senators by a score of 7-4. to four. Tanner Pearson and Bo Horvat each had two goals and an assist each to lead the Canucks to the win. Louis Erickson also had a goal and added three assists of his own. Ottawa tried to come back and Dylan DeMello had three assists, but came up short as Jacob Markstrom stopped 21 shots. The Senators take on the Calgary Flames tonight at the Dome, while the Canucks face Columbus on Sunday. The Toronto Maple Leafs took down the geor geographical rival the Buffalo Sabres last night in Buffalo. The Leafs put up 42 shots on the Sabres and won despite a good effort from Sabres goalie Carter Hutton. Toronto's big three of Austin Matthews, John Tavares and Mitch Marner all had goals. Both teams play Saturday, the Leafs take on the Rangers, and the Sabres head to Montreal to play the Habs. The Toronto Raptors have had a truly special season, and with that season winding down, they went to Oklahoma City for a huge game. Let's take a look in the first, Marc Gasol, pass it over there to, to Fred Van Vliet, and he dunks it in, makes no mistake. A minute later, Russell Westbrook. Finds Terrence Ferguson over for the three, and he drains it. Not long after, Russell Westbrook does what he does best with a beautiful reverse layup. Now in the second, Norm Powell feeds Kawhi behind the line, and he drains the three, one of his 22 on the night. Later on in the second, Gasol makes a beautiful pass to Pascal Siakam down low. He had 33 in the game of his own. Westbrook's pass is stripped by Siakam later, who breaks down the court, finds Green, and finds Siakam for the big slam. And in the dying seconds, a scramble near OKC's hoop. No one can get their hands on it except for Westbrook. He ties the game with only 4.8 seconds left to go. This one needed overtime. Van Vliet undresses Westbrook and drives in for a gorgeous layup. And that will be it as the Raptors will take it 123 to 114 over the Thunder. So with the win, the Raptors improved to 51 and 21 on the season and sit second in the Western Conference and in the league to the Milwaukee Bucks. Pascal Siakam continued his great season, finishing with 33 points and 13 rebounds, while Russell, while Russell Westbrook had 20, 42 in the loss. Irish golfer Rory McIlroy has announced he will join the Canadian Open for the first time in his career. McIlroy is coming off a big win in the Players' Championship on Sunday, his first since winning the Arnold Palmer Invitational almost exactly a year ago. The former world number one golfer has four major championships to his name, including two PGA championships in 2012 and 2014. The tournament starts on June 9th at the Hamilton Golf Club. And that's a look at sports for today. I honestly hope and wish that we're going to make it to that Trojans banquet. I know we're not part of the team, but come on. This could be so fun. Yeah, I know, right? And all the food, get my hands on there. So. And speaking of these hands, I know that we use them for almost everything we do, including eating, driving, and riding. However, who says we can't use these bad boys to do something elegant? You'll learn about a cool style of knitting after the break. The Alberta Animal Rescue Crew Society is focused on rehabilitating animals. Changing the lives of these animals through kindness is the vision and the passion. 
ARX is designed as an emergency and quarantine shelter to help animals get back into the world. Animals are an important part of all communities, and ARX works to create a safe world for these beautiful creatures. Help ARX help animals by giving them a loving and respecting home. To find out more or to donate, visit arcs.ca. just that easy. Visit our website today. What do you think about when the word weaving is mentioned? Well, at the Alberta University of the Arts, you can take a course in fiber and major in weaving. Say news file Alicia Nynstrom is taking us on quite an adventure. Uh, so the weaving program here starts as an introductory class in second year. So you learn all the basics for weaving, different techniques, different ways to weave. And then starting in third year, you go into more a self-directed studio practice. So there's people doing tapestry and complex weaving in the third year classes, I believe. So tapestry is on the big upright looms, doing pictures, everything like that, where complex weaving is like double weave, so you weave two things at once on one warp, which is what's on the loom. So yeah, it's very, it's a very busy program. There's a lot of people very interested in weaving, um, usually pretty full classes. All of us going pretty, gets pretty loud, despite the fact that you think weaving would be quiet, because the reeds are really loud when you have to hit the thread into the weaving. But We use a loom, so the, it's a big upright loom. We, in, in first year, we use a four harness loom, but there's up to 16 harness, harness looms here. So each harness uh, you can put thread through and it makes more complex designs the more harnesses you get. A block weave pattern, you, instead of patterning out uh, thread by thread, we pattern inch by inch, which makes big blocks in the weaving. So, and we also are using really thick material, so we're either using really chunky yarn, like doubled to quadrupled for each pass, or we're using cloth. So people have like cut up t-shirts and jeans and are now putting it into their uh, weavings and we're making rugs. You don't have to use yarn, you could use string, you can use cloth, you can weave paper, um, really anything that's movable that you can put in there. Someone has woven in the past here in this program nails into their weaving. Now we all love hockey and we love competition, but this is more important. There's this like this little kid who is made who changed my life. Let's check this out. Mm -hmm. Why? Is the damn bone coming on? Why? Yeah. Oh. I gotta have a nap. Okay, okay. Well, I can safely say that kid's a better skater than I am. Oh, I'm, oh, well. <laughs> Very cute kid. I, re I really identified with the part when he laid down on the ice and decided to have a little, a little nice little snooze. You know, sometimes skating's hard. You know, yeah, I was going to need a little bit of a break. I was going to say that not, you know, when he said that, it really hit home. You know, I, I felt it. I felt his pain. <laughs> I kind of want to mic up my kids later in life. I don't even know if it's going to be hockey, but just any, any sport or any just sport, any activity yeah. that they do. If they're... I don't know if they're playing baseball or if it's their basket weaving. And before that, we have something that you want to mention about the five-day forecast. Yeah, we're just going to run back to this five-day forecast really quick here. Tomorrow is going to be kind of the last really nice day, and it's Friday, so what a perfect way to end the week. Saturday, things start to cool off a little bit, and those clouds are rolling in, and by Sunday, we've got that full-blown low-pressure system. That is awesome. I am so happy to see that. I just got to say that Calgary weather is just something you can never get used to. Thank you for joining us.